Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta in what could be another of the many gated communities in the urban sprawl of Gurgaon next to Delhi. But this little dry patch of garden or park, you can call it, that we see, this is where an Olympic medal, a silver medal was made. And my guest today, somebody who fully deserved that silver medal at the Paralympics at Rio, Deepa Malik. But you deserve many, many, many other medals Thank for so everything much. else you've done in life. Thank you so much. And Thanks a lot. Tell me, aren't you tired of, uh, tired? How many times have you heard the word truly inspirational in your life? <laughs> I know, I, I, but I guess uh, uh, it's a huge blessing to be receiving these kind of compliments. And I'm absolutely overwhelmed. Uh, the reaction that I've got to my medal, the entire nation, uh, not just on the urban level, I was surprised that even on the rural level, the way it has been celebrated. You are a Jatni from Haryana. Absolutely. From Mara Haryana. Oh, I'm so proud of that. <laughs> Mara Haryana. Ja ka khana. Absolutely. Uh, from Sonipat. Yeah, Sonipat so, Bhaiswal. Sonipat very Bhaiswal. I'm very proud of saying Bhaiswal because uh, I guess uh, in his mind, there are Olympic medals. Yes, and his mind will be very strong. No, no. I think we also eat food, 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 everything. Yes. So, so uh, was the village thrilled with their success? Uh, very thrilled. In fact, uh, there was an added responsibility which was thrown at me even before I went for my competition. Uh, uh, the unfortunate, I mean, of course, uh, 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 a lot has been given already by Yogeshwar Dutt to our country and to our village. Yes, but yes. this time he did not have a good competition. Oh, he's from your village also? Uh, same village. I see. And uh, the sarpanch of the village and they ended up telling the press, Ruk jao, we hamara ek share baki hai. And I was, baki hai. Uh, ha, so, <laughs> so it's like I was very surprised and honored at the same time and happy at the same time that uh, so much of inclusivity is there. Right. Uh, they did not uh, make any uh, difference between the Yellow Olympics or the Paralympics. Uh, and uh, equal honor and expectation was given to both. Uh, so this is a very inclusive kind of an encouragement that came from my... And if a village can do that, right. I think it's time the entire nation does that. The oh, entire nation did that, but yeah. I believe the village landed up in strength at the airport. Yes, there was eight lorries full of people and uh, the most amazing thing was that I arrived at the V hours, early hours. Like at, It was 2 a.m. by the time I got out of uh, the airport. And to be able to reach the airport, uh, they must have left at what time? So entire night they were awake. And almost 200, 250 with dhol, baja, nagada, laddu, and laddu. you, and they were there. <laughs> Haryana, they said, such as a chora best player. So in this case, so as a chori, chori best player. Yes. And and the uh, the beauty is that I am the bahu. Right. And uh, of the village. Of the village, and uh, they were so thrilled. And for a for a moment, I was like, oh, I'm wearing a track suit, and this is a very modern attire for me to be in front of all the seniors and elders of the village. Because uh, I bet your village has a cop. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, you'll be surprised that uh, what they brought for me was a gada. Gada is basically bheem ka gada, bheem ka gada yeah, Hanuman ka gada, mace, the mace yes, that we are right. talking about. And uh, it is a very, very uh, male oriented trophy. Right. And right, it, for pehlwans get it. Pehlwans, uh, Hind Kesaris, uh, uh, boxers, boxers yes. uh, bodybuilders. Right. So normally these are the events which get this kind of a trophy and men get this for right. absolute physical fitness they get it. And here they are giving it to a female, a woman, uh, whose chest below paralyzed. How do you reconcile this? Is Haryana's lowest I, gender I, balance in the yeah, country I, I think, and this pride? Uh, uh, it's definitely there's an element of paradox out there. I do understand that. But I, this also truly represents the transformation that's happening. Uh, and uh, I'm glad I'm part of this transformation. And somewhere, uh, my medal and these kind of achievements and the thought process which has got uh, attached to it will definitely bring about a wave of change. And it is already doing that. 
So, so Deepak, uh, tell us how, uh, I believe this is where you practiced your throw. Uh, we'll have to shift there. <laughs> I'll a little follow there. Follow you, and, yes, uh, that's right. Try and keep pace uh, yeah, with you. Yeah, because uh, basically, uh, I have to do my skill practice twice a day. Right. And uh, if I, you know, pick up the whole thing and I go to the uh, some kind of a stadium, right. the driving time takes up a lot of time. Right. And right. so the colony was very kind to give me the space here and I would put up my throw frame right. uh, uh, in this area and do my short put throws here. I see. Uh, and I have also set up a little. Uh, gym equipment and everything up there in my house only. In your apartment. Yes. yes. Though of course I have been going uh, to the trainers in the gym to Shreveport Sports Complex, but uh, uh, majorly the throw and the skill practice has been done right here. And uh, if you want, good. I can even put my chair and show you. Uh, Please do. Uh, uh, so that has to be brought. We can do right. it in the house. So I think. Uh, uh, Devika can get Devika, it. Devika, tell uh, Bhaiya to get. Uh, Devika, the chair. I believe. Uh, uh, I mean, she's your daughter, I believe yeah. she's also studying uh, disability now and yes, she's going she, to do her PhD. She, uh, we are the only mother-daughter team in the entire world who play the competitions together in para sports. Uh -huh. So uh, I think uh, um, there were two ways to look at it. People said, oh my God, disability in the house and over and over again because as a child I got paralyzed because of tumors and then I had surgery, rehab, etc. And later, uh, Again, the tumors came, came back, back much later in the life. And when my elder child was born, she had a tragic accident where oh. her uh, she had a severe head injury because of which her left got paralyzed and then she was rehabilitating out of it. So she also gets classified as a uh, para sports person under the category of T37. So that is where you have mild weakness on one side right. of the limbs. So she's a 100 meter, 200 meter sprinter and uh, We've been doing international events also together. Though of course she has to work harder to beat the mom. <laughs> but uh, she's also using her expertise and her education to kind of help uh, uh, create awareness and to be uh, somewhere helpful in the para sports scenario in India. And she has started a small foundation called Wheeling Happiness which is uh, giving a lot of assistance and encouragement to outdoor activities. That's Devika. That's Devika. Right. And she has won a couple of international accolades for that, like right. the Young Leader Award and all. And uh, now she's dedicating her education for this. She is moving to Loughborough University to do her Disability Sports Psychology PhD program. Yes. Yeah. So ma'am, uh, tell us about your sickness. Because you were not born with this. Yes, I was not, right? born, not born with this. With this this I, came very late in life uh, uh, because it makes it that much tougher to adjust with it. Uh, yes, you're right because in 1998 you win a beauty contest. Uh, I was uh, crowned as one of the Navy Queens and uh, in 1999 you're relegated to a wheelchair where you are told that uh, post the surgery and the tumor removal, your uh, spinal cord is going to snap. So and you will... knew that you were going to yes. be paralyzed? I was in fact, I often say this, that my doctors gave me seven days to celebrate walking. Right. I was sent home to prepare and come back to get paralyzed. And when I say prepare, it was basically, uh, you know, uh, this is going to be a long hospitalization. So make your arrangements and come. So I had to literally pack off my home and take away the expensive decorative or breakable items from there and because my younger one was barely three and the elder one was also under rehab and recovering from her stroke of paralysis. Uh, husband was at the war that time. Cargill was yes, on, yes. yes. So he's a cavalry man, I know. He's a cavalry man. But I've, I've I found many, many proud cavalry men tweeting. Uh, that yes, and, uh, and that's again, I think, uh, uh, being from an army background definitely gives you an element of courage and Sindh adaptability. Horse, I think your husband. Yes, he's from the Sindh Horse. And he I, I and believe that, his father also yes, commanded the same absolutely. regiment. He's the third generation in cavalry. In cavalry. Yeah. So, in cavalry, this runs, I think, even more strongly than in other regiments. Uh, you're right, and right. we're very proud of that uh, legacy. And you're completely foggy from all sides. Absolutely. The daughter, the mother, the sister, daughter, and daughter in law, and wife. Of. Of, of an army of, of the forge. Yeah. <laughs> of the forge. So, uh, he was in Kargil at that point. Ji, ji. Uh, you were in hospital. Uh -huh. 
Uh, how did you mentally prepare yourself for what was coming? I think uh, God chose a time when I was emotionally distracted right. and uh, distracted in a way that uh, obviously the main focus was on safety of my husband and mine was also pre praying continuously that he should be well and he should be good and uh, uh, whereas uh, and the hospital in which I was admitted. Uh, it, it was a hospital where all the Kargil war wounded right. victims were being brought in. So uh, I could see people um, losing a limb or an eye for the line Did of their duty. You sometimes worry that maybe the next casualty that's coming that in. That was next, always there. Next helicopter is my in, husband. In fact, even when they were getting me ready for the surgery and uh, uh, doing the preparations for the anesthesia and uh, uh, sterilization of the body, any time I heard a chopper arrive, I would just look at the nurses and the doctors to kind of let me know that... Uh, if it's him. Yeah. So even before uh, they were giving me the anesthesia, I had heard a chopper arrive. So I said, hey, before I actually uh, go into this uh, uh, kind of a state of uh, being uh, unconscious, can you quickly go and find out if the list has his name or not? So that was the situation. So I think the focus And you were worrying about the daughter as well. Daughters definitely because I was telling myself time and again that uh, I have to get up because it was a very severe uh, surgery. It was just below the neck. What exactly was this tumour? This is a cyst which was originating from within the spinal cord. Right. So to clean it, uh, they had to cut the spinal cord and the moment the spinal cord gets cut the uh, communication gets the cut communication in the body. Gets, so t I have chest pillow paralysis I do not have oh, any not control no no uh, if you say waist below uh, the International Paralympic Committee will change my category <laughs> <laughs> because you'll be surprised there are eight categories uh, even in the wheelchair seated throw uh, events so mine is chest below paralysis. I do not have torso or uh, any kind of uh, you know, mid uh, balance. You have to be a nutcase chutney to <laughs> laugh and say, well, I have a face below. I have a yeah, chest I think, below paralysis. I think, uh, not a face below paralysis. This see, is really. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not truly inspirational. This is nutty. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know I, I, think, I say that affectionately, uh, I, and I, I take it very affectionately because I definitely take it as a compliment. Uh, uh, that's what I teach also and that is how we have named the foundation Wheeling Happiness. Wheeling and happiness. a lot of people ask me looking at me on the wheelchair saying, Aap, Madam, kya ho gaya? Tabet kaisi hai? Uh -huh. And I turn around and say the only disease I suffer from is happiness. Uh -huh. And I think uh, this has been an innate quality to retain the that sense of humour. Mr. Advani who uh -huh. goes on irrespective of the years, if you ask him, he says, the only disease I suffer from is good health. Wow. So, <laughs> so, so I think, uh, happiness, yeah, it's yes. happiness. Right. And I'm so happy that I've been able to retain a sense of humor. Uh, I had had a surgery as a child. Right. I had a redo surgery <laughs> when I went to RR hospital. Are these malignant tumors? Are these, uh, are these just troublesome tumors? They're, that they're coming uh, down? troublesome tumors. Initially, they thought it was tuberculosis and then they even tested it for malignancy. But then they do have a habit of coming back. Coming back. So, um, and coming back in the wrongest possible place. Absolutely. And uh, uh, after my second surgery, I had a very complicated condition where the brain fluid seeped out of the surgery point. Oh. And uh, the doctors came and with a very sorry face, they said, Deepa, we'll have to take you in for another surgery. So, and it's going to get even worse because we are reopening the same site within right. three days of the operation. And can you imagine my first reaction to that news was, so you're going to see me nude again, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and later he says, I was so nervous trying to tell you that Deepa, we are going to take you for surgery and Pat comes this reply. And you made us <laughs> laugh. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, I guess I'm happy that I have a sense of humor because it eases out a lot of things and you can laugh off your troubles and your challenges.